know, the church's tradition has always, uh, for centuries, said Luke was a beloved physician, a companion of Paul. And that really uh, originated in the late second century with the theologian Irenaeus and some other early Christian writings. And it's grounded in the fact that, first, Paul talks about a co-worker named Luke in his letter to Philemon. He also talks uh, about the beloved physician Luke in his letter, in his letter to Colossians. But I think the answer is a, a lot more complicated than that. And we don't have to look any further than the opening verses of the Gospel of Luke, where the author says that he has conducted uh, some research, we might say, and he has interviewed eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus and the things that he is going to write about in the gospel, which I think suggests to many scholars that the author is probably a second-generation Christian uh, and is probably not someone who was a companion of Paul but someone who inherits that tradition. So I think in balance, we might say that we're probably looking at some, an anonymous uh, second generation Christian who has inherited certain traditions and is setting out to write uh, what he calls an orderly account of the story of Jesus. A, a really uh, sort of a modern theory is that the same author wrote the Gospel of Luke, Volume 1, and the Acts of the Apostles as Volume 2. There are some uh, suggestions in the opening verses of each book that it's the same author. Uh, the writer refers to uh, a person named Theophilus in both the opening of Luke and the opening of Acts. Some, some would say that Theophilus might be uh, the patron of the author, the one uh, underwriting the expense of that. And others would say, well, that's a literary uh, device because in Greek the word Theophilus means lover or friend of God. Either way, many people have uh, bought into the idea that it's the same author creating a two-volume set. I would say one thing that um, might cut against that is that we know from uh, ancient Judaism and even the uh, early Christian movement, most texts were uh, created by um, a group, a community of people. And uh, it's, if we uh, see this as being authored by one person, that's possible. It's also equally possible that it comes out of a group or even a school of people holding some of the same uh, traditions and ideas. I, you know, I think what's really important for uh, a lot of modern Christians to understand, the names Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not attached to the writings that we know by those names until the end of the second century, almost 100, and, 100 to 125 years after the uh, texts were created. And that had to do with a movement in the church to link those texts with some of the earliest followers of Jesus. So I think in, in a lot of ways, I, I think it's safe to say that the name Luke uh, is added uh, to give authority to the text as being one of the earliest witnesses to the life and the ministry and the death and resurrection of Jesus. So multiple authors, uh, probably coming out of one community, but that's the way texts were created in antiquity, and that's how they were continued and built on and the traditions passed on. So I, I, would, I tend to think it's probably much more the creation of a community with a particular story to tell about their encounter with Jesus in his life and encounters with the risen Christ after his death and resurrection. We should uh, just highlight the fact that Luke clearly has a grounding in the Jewish scriptures. He uses uh, allusions to the Jewish law, the Torah, regularly throughout his writing. 
and he assumes that his audience is going to understand those illusions. So he's writing to a group of people who understand Jewish tradition. Uh, most people think it's probably a principally a Gentile audience, but it's clearly one grounded in the customs and the traditions and the texts of ancient Judaism. Thank you.